It's like they knew I'd been off for a couple of weeks and they were trying to see what they could get away with, y'all. Like, you remember Scott Lively, the American bigot pastor behind Uganda's Kill the Gays bill? Well, he took advantage of my absence last week by going on a big rant about how if only people in the 1920s knew that women's suffrage would lead to baby murder and transgender pastors, they'd never have made the mistake of letting women vote. And I know you're dying to hear how he connected the dots between women's suffrage and transgender pastors. I was pretty curious myself, but apparently that's just assumed knowledge when you tune in to Breaking News Bible Study. But Lively wasn't the only pastor lamenting women's rights last week. Matt Hagee is the son of John Hagee, which is kind of fucked up by itself, seeing as how John Hagee made his entire career on telling people the world was going to end in a terrible disaster, but he had a kid anyway. So either he's evil and wanted to torture our kid, or he was evil and never believed the bullshit he was selling. And like father, like son, Matt isn't exactly an ethical standout. So during his sermon last Sunday, he tossed out a few words on the subject of women's rights and LGBTQ rights, basically the rights of all the non-him people. And those words included phrases like doctrine of demons. After an aggressive fantasy about homosexuals being forced into all of his stuff, he summarized, quote, it's not a social justice issue. It is a doctrine of demons, end quote. And since we know that demons are the Christian explanation of temptation, we can draw all the conclusions we need from that obsessive rant. But since I haven't talked to you in a while, I don't want it to be all bad news, which I'll admit is a weird setup for a story out of Sudan. But that nation continues to crawl its way towards respectability with a series of reforms designed to bring their laws in line with the international standards. We talked about this back in May when they announced these reforms would include a law against female genital mutilation. Well, the reforms were officially enacted last week, and they include the ban on FGM, as well as a repeal on the nation's apostasy laws, getting rid of public floggings, and scrapping the law that required women to get their husband's permission to travel alone. So congratulations to the people of Sudan who fought so hard and risked so much to push through these reforms. There's still a ways to go, but that's an awful big step. And just so I don't risk being too optimistic in my return, I should point out that given the present trend lines, Sudan should bypass America in terms of human rights by 2023. And with a quick promise not to make it so long between visits, I'll hand things back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli. <laughs> 